Let's take a look at these patch notes and see what all of the stir is about. Ooh, Foundation Day special artwork unveiled. So this is new. Ezrin Foundation Day has returned. Arky is overjoyed and thrilled to celebrate this year's Ezrin Foundation Day with all of our heirs once again. And it wouldn't be Epic 7 Ezrin Foundation Day without a special piece of artwork, right? So for this year, for this year as well, our talented Epic 7 artists have sent their festival greetings just for you. Check them out with Arky. Aww. Euphine is sharing cake with her torturer. Isn't that sweet? No, no one else sees anything kind of messed up about this piece of artwork, especially, especially her holding the bottle full of stuff that she tortures Euphine with. <laughs> this is, this is kind of awful. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the the art's really nice. Lore wise, this is. Kind of terrifyingly Stockholmly diabolical. Yes, that's the word for it. Diabolical. C Fan and Polly looking kind of all right. Yes, yeah, she got buffed. We are always grateful to the heirs who continue to support Epic 7. We hope that this year's Ezra and Foundation Day brings back so much joy and happiness. So do all of us. Make the most of the summer heat with Epic 7. And your ongoing support means a lot to us. All the ongoing support. I'm sure the first comment is ongoing support. And not about China. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well... Enough of that. Let's look at the patches. Balance patch preview. Hello, Epic7. We sincerely appreciate the interest and support of all of our heirs who have continued their adventures with us in Epic7. With these balance adjustments, we plan to implement changes to six heroes and two artifacts. That's a respectable number. These changes are scheduled to take effect following the update on 9.12. So, I guess... I guess we are not having maintenance next week either. We're just going to sail all the way to the 12th for maintenance. We'll see, I guess. With this balance adjustment, we have made changes to certain heroes that haven't seen very much use. The detail adjustments are shown. I like this, right? We, we've seen a lot of balance patches that are like doing nothing for units that are never used or that are doing unit stuff for units that are already used. So hopefully, hopefully this is true. Judge Kisei. Yeah, not much use. Oh, they already have me. They already have me. Lionheart Sermia. I've, I've heard some people say they aren't happy about Fapton. We'll see why. Abigail. I mean, they, they, they had... They had damn and damn and damn and Abigail and Alencia. Shooting Star Cadiz? Okay, you have my attention. And otherworldly machinery. Oh, that's Yuna's artifact, right? The the free one that everybody gets. Fan of light and dark. Please fix the RNG. Please, please, please. Okay. Judge Kisei. Oh, man. A lot of text on Judge Kisei. So, tax all enemies of Scythe. Dispelling all buffs before a 100% chance to make them able to counterattack and a 75% chance to defense break is what she was. They're... Spelling all D. Okay, so they're maintaining the debuffs or maintaining the dispel. 100% chance to decrease hit chance. Okay, so they're taking away the chance to counterattack, replacing it with a blind. Keeping the defense break for two turns. Okay, they're giving her a self CR push by 25% per target? So they're giving her an extra turn. Oh, and skills can't be counterattacked, so. Okay, so they're taking away the anti counterattack for two turns and just making the skill unable to be counterattacked, but they're giving a guaranteed extra turn. So this is basically Faithless Lydica's passive, but she can do it whether or not she crits. 
So even if it, even if she hits into like Auden and misses, even if there's an evasion unit on the team like Savior Auden, she still is going to get the full push, whereas Flitica doesn't. So this is like a, a, a buffed version of Flitica's passive. Sober and grants an extra turn. We don't need the extra turn because we got the extra turn built in, baked into the combat readiness, but a uh, 20% ignore ER. Ignores ER, can't be counterattacked, gives her an extra turn, has a good chance to defense break, and a 100% chance to blind. Wow. Now, if, if only she's got something to deal with the fact that she is slow as dog. Attacks all enemies, distorting space and time. Um... Okay, so they're reducing her damage dealt with more enemies, enemies and just adding damage dealt increase straight up. Usually what this means is whatever this bonus is, they're just baking it into the kit as a buff to damage, right? They're, they're, they're making it no longer conditional, they're just making it part of it. Acquires two souls, acquires three souls. Minor nerf, but who cares? Damage dealt increases more enemies. Damage dealt it's the same thing. Uh, oh yeah, this is awakens the so same thing, right? So it's it's making one less soul. It's no big deal here. The biggest issue with Judge Kise is she takes really really good gear to build, and if you want her to do her debuffing stuff. It's tough to make this unit as strong as she needs to be, the gear level she needs to be, and to put a little bit of shit into effectiveness too. Because what good is a chance to blind and defense break when you're running, you know, 5% effectiveness and you can't stick anything on anybody? So this allows you to build her full on DPS and still have all of her debuff capabilities. And it kind of guarantees the extra turn. You don't have to worry about evasion units. She'll be really good into Auden too. I still think, I still think it's not going to change her use that much because it's still hard to build her with all the damage and get her enough speed and get her um, the damage to do things. I think at a top top end, she'll be really really good. It's less damage overall. Do you think it's less damage overall? How do we know that? I mean, damage dealt increase, damage dealt decrease. Read down, read down, okay. Judge Key says dependence on Soulburn has been reduced. True. Ignore ER is still kind of dependent on Soulburn, but sure. End of Evil cannot counterattack effect will be replaced by Blind, which is one of the more debilitating debuffs to get. But it no longer triggers counterattacks. Additionally, it now boosts combat radius based on the bunch of... Yeah, yeah, it's got the Flitica passive, enabling faster turn acquisition. Furthermore, her Soul Burn now ignores the target's effect resistance instead of granting an extra turn, making it easier to apply debuffs when using a Soul Burn. I still don't think it removes her dependence on Soul Burn, right? I mean, unless you were just going full damage originally, you're still going to need to Soul Burn to get the, the debuffs on, but if you didn't care about the debuffs, sure, I guess it reduces dependence on Soul Burn. As End of Evil now grants up 100% combat readiness, its cooldown is reduced to one turn. To offset the easier skill chaining, the Soul Burn gain from Wave of Light is reduced by one. Moreover, the damage increase based on the number of targets Wave of Light is removed with a slight increase to the base damage as compensation. Okay, I see what you're saying, right? They're saying they, they're removing this damage boost and it's only a slight increase to base damage as compensation. So this is why I think, right? Damage dealt increase with more enemies, right? Probably if you had four enemies on the team, this was better. And if you have two enemies on the team, this is better. And if you had three enemies on the team, it's going to be the freaking same. That's, that's my thought. We'll have to see what the numbers look like when it comes out, but... That, that's what my gut's saying. Um, I still think this is a top-end unit. This is not something, you know, gold and challenger players are going to really be able to exploit that much. Maybe I'm wrong, but she is very, very hard to build. With You know, the, one, the only nice thing is you now no longer have to worry about effectiveness as a stat if you want to have her be a sub-DPS debuffer. If you're building her full-on normal powerhouse DPS and you don't care about effectiveness at all, it still gives you the option if you have souls, and if you don't have the option, it still gives you the ability to run this skill into another skill without having to soul burn. She's one speed faster than Flitica? Yeah. She doesn't do all the tricks Flitica does and no skill and all. I like it. I, I think it's a buff. Is it enough of a buff to change her use in the game? 
I don't know. I think people who already use her will use her more often. I think a handful of people might try her out and find they like her and use her, but I'm just, I just don't know that she's going to be impactful enough to, to deal with the insane thickness that we're fighting. Testing required. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, tentatively put a wait and see on this one because uh, I love Judge Kisei. I used her with great success a couple of seasons ago, and I haven't used her since. But um, yeah, two seasons ago, I picked her all the damn time. She's very, very good if you can get her onto the team, if your opponent lets her through, and if you can build her right. And this does reduce the difficulty to build her. Isn't this like the third change to Judge Kisei already? Yeah, they they keep trying to bring this girl into the limelight, and it um, it never sticks, right? It makes her really, really good for about a week, and then people just realize the gear is better on other units. My girl, tell me we get to use her more often because her skin is so good. There's, there's a couple of people who don't like the Sermia skin, and I don't know what it's like living your life being that wrong all the time. Okay, we're removing acquiring fighting spirit. We're removing consume fighting spirit. So we're removing fighting spirit entirely. She's no longer a fighting spirit unit. So that means anti-fighting spirit things like Elvira are no longer really a threat to her. So that's interesting. Um, what are we adding? We're removing the increased combat radius by 20% and we're replacing it by increased combat radius by 20% before resetting the skill. Before resetting the skill. Before resetting the skill. Lionheart Sermi was designed to excel against enemies as a prime that primarily use extra attacks, counter attacks, dual attacks. However, the introduction of heroes that constrain resources, acquisition, see Phantom Polly, her effectiveness has diminished. Yeah, yeah, Polly came out and she vanished. In this update, we, adame, we aim to address the weaknesses by changing Lionheart Sermia's skill mechanics from fighting spirit acquisition consumption system to a cooldown based system. Throughout this change, we hope Lionheart Sermia will once again be able to shine in various environments. Yeah, every time S2 proxy reset the S3. So I I guess all this is is um they decided that C Phantom Polly was too strong, that possibly Elvira was too strong, so they're making her immune to it. They're not really buffing her as a unit so much as they're nerfing the uh mechanic that screwed her over, right? They're 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 giving her a counter to their counter. There's really no buff to Lionheart. She doesn't hit harder. She she doesn't uh, um, do anything differently, right? She still gets her 20% push. She still resets her... She's still on her S3. She does her counter. The only difference is now you can do this without having to rely on fighting spirit, which means anti-fighting spirit units no longer screw her over. So it is going to increase her usage because it's going to reduce the counters to her. You know what? I'll take it. It increases the usage. Okay, I I am I am on the Sermia train. This 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 is really really good. Yeah, the the only the only difference is she's gonna be able to S two into her S three, cycle one more turn, then S two into her S three when there's counter attacks. I don't think this is broken. I think this is a good solid buff for her. I think this brings her back into high usefulness by taking away some of her major counters. I think it is just less of a buff for her and more of a nerf against resource reduction and anti-fighting spirit units all right it just makes her usable into places she wasn't usable before pirate captain flan flan holds a special place in my heart guys right i mean she's my heckin desktop wallpaper so hopefully they did her good. Tax the enemy with a gun with a 75% to steal one buff. And Soulburn grants an extra turn. They're changing it to a defense break. And Soulburn increases effect chance to 100% and makes it a two-turn defense break. Where's my extra turn? The fuck is this? She's a control unit. I mean, a defense break is nice, don't get me wrong, but control units, why do you care about defense breaking something? 
And stealing buffs was nice. You could, you could specifically target the unit to hit, try to steal its buff, and you did because you had a ton of effectiveness. And then you could go again and control stuff. Now they're taking away our ability to take a buff to make your team stronger and then take an extra turn to control stuff and... Keep reading. Okay. Uh, they're taking away your effectiveness by 50% and increasing... Wait a minute. And increase hit resist... She's a control unit and they're taking a 50 effectiveness away from her? Are they making her a bruiser? Are they giving her a shit ton of damage or something? Redirects 30% of the damage suffered to the foremost ally. They're taking that away. How are they making a bruiser and they're taking her mitigation away? When one or more damage sharing effects, after using execution, the caster when the caster has a buff, activates hunt. Hunt can be activated once per turn. Okay, okay, okay. Time to pillage. When the enemy, when the enemy has a buff after using a skill, activates time to pillage can only be activated once every three turns. Grants pillage and increases the effectiveness for all allies through two turns. Pillage, after attacking, steals one buff from the target. Okay, so... Okay, maybe I was hasty. Give me a second here. So, she gives the ability to steal buffs to the entire team for two turns instead of her S1 just being a chance to steal one buff. Now everybody can steal buffs. Okay. Okay, calming down a little bit. That's not so terrible. And increases effectiveness of all allies for two turns. So her S3 gives her the 50% effectiveness back through a buff, right? She get, she's, she's getting the effectiveness through using her skill. I guess the, 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 the critical hit res kind of makes up for the direct damage transfer. Kind of. At least it does 70% of the time. That's what, that's, that's like, that's, that's Navy Captain Landy's passive, right? Pirate Captain Flan is being improved to enhance her contribution to allies and her effectiveness in prolonged battles. The Scourge of the Seas damage redirect effect with the foremost allies removed and replaced with a new effect that increases her hit resistance, only hers. Additionally, effectiveness increases removed, but through time of pillage, it increases the effectiveness of all allies, except that that's going to happen after you use its time to pillage or her, whatever S3 is called, Scourge of the Seas. Execution buff stealing effect is replaced with a decreased defense. I mean, this just makes control a little bit easier if you defense break them too, but... I mean, look, she needed a change, right? In her current form, she wasn't working. Everybody can say they ruined Pirate Flan. How can you ruin something that's already not working? Megalevia says she was fine. Somebody, somebody link me the GG on her. Let's see how often she was being used. Ranked 128 out of 333 units. People aren't reaching, guys. Okay, bottom line is this completely changes the way you're going to use her. You're going to have to re-gear for this. You're going to have to re-kit for this. You're going to have to decide how you're going to want to speed to in her team. I, I'm going to be hopeful on this one because I don't think Flan in her current form was being used in any meaningful and impactful way. I did not see Flan once last season. And I don't mean my fights. I mean watching everybody fight. And if you saw her... I'm sure it happened, right? Clearly, she was picked once in a while, more than Enot and Elson, but I don't think she's being used in any meaningful and impactful way. Taking her effect off crushes her. It just means you have to re-gear a little bit for it. Redos is saying, the problem is you guys think about units in a vacuum. If they have immunity, then units like Haste will have a field day. Kurz says, current P. Flan got eaten alive by Selene, but with crit resistance she can survive. Yes, people are saying that 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 the the crit resistance is worse than the 30% da you know, redirecting damage suffered. That's crazy talk. First of all, this, this didn't stack with Arius. This does. Th this, this is an improvement to her tankiness. Sure, there's an RNG chance that something just hits it, but you know what? Run an Arius Knight if you're scared of that. And then it's just 
better in every way. Yeah, and it doesn't kill the front line. Having her on the team doesn't kill your front line unit, which allows you to actually take her into teams and not worry about having a super tanky front line, which can make even imprint stacking easier. I don't know, guys. I, I, I want to see what people cook with this. But I think everything down here, I think everything down here is a buff. I think people are really upset about this extra turn, but they're worried about an extra turn in a unit that is not being used, except by Shadobi. And if it makes her more used, I'm about it, because I love this unit. And I want to see Sermia used more. I want to see Flan used more. I want to see Kisei used more. These are three of my favorite units with my favorite skins and my favorite artwork. I want to I want to see it done. I want to see these changes. And if they don't go far enough, like Judge Kisei, she'll get touched again, I'm sure. So I don't know. I'm 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 gonna be hopeful on this one, guys. Maybe I'm uh maybe I'm coping. Maybe I'm just not seeing the bigger nerf picture here. But I, I think this is good enough, especially this. It'll be interesting to see her tested. It'll be interesting to see how she pans out. There's a lot of people that didn't like buffs when they were announced. They are like, it's a nerf. It ruins the unit. Uh, remember Fire Charlotte when she got her buffs and people were losing their shit? And then how great she was right after her patch? Um, shit, Death Dealer Ray. People cried about Death Deal Way. It ruins his kit. He's boring now. This is a nerf. Revert Death Deal Array. Yeah, how'd that work out? That aged really fucking well, right? <laughs> I, 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 I'm excited to see the chefs cook, and I want to see, uh, see if this really makes Flan improved and more playable or not. Allowing for more aggressive strategies. I guess we will see. Abigail. So what do we do for Abigail? Blood Banquet. Um, dispels all debuffs from the target. Okay, so this is nice, right? This fixes her issue uh, with uh, Para and other units that put buff block, right? This lets her uh, this lets her cleanse the cleanse the debuffs before she grants Im immortality and vampirism so that buff block doesn't just hard kill her kit. So that's it's a nice buff. Dispels all debuffs from the enemy and attacks with blade thorns increases the effectiveness of the attack by 50% This is just a fancy way of saying instead of does injuries up to 25% she now does injuries up to 38% Damage dealt increased proportional casters max health. Okay, so I assume we're going to be doing 50% more damage then right? Oh you're saying it's going to give her the effect effectively 126% effectiveness for using these skills. So this changes nothing, right? I mean, this just lets you build her, I guess you can, it makes her easier to build on a unit that was already pretty easy to build. This is the only thing that's really a change. And it lets you be a little bit more, you know, it lets you be a little bit more resistant to bullshit like Para. Abigail's overall usability is improved. When the backline ally other than herself takes lethal damage, she will now cleanse all debuffs when granting immortality and vampirism will significantly enhance her survivability. I guess if there's a debuffer on the team, it significantly increases survivability. Sure, sure. Or a buff blocker. Additionally, Scarlet Garden has now increased its effectiveness 50%, making it easier to apply its effect to its enemy with a high effect resistance, who you're not going to use it on because 50% more effectiveness on Abigail, of all people, is not going to let you target things that have 300 ER, 250 ER, or even 200 ER. So, yeah. I think this changes nothing, guys. I think the only thing this changes is it will let you last pick her into units that already have buff block. I don't think this is going to change her usability or utility at all. I think the people who are already picking Abigail are still going to pick Abigail. And the people that weren't picking Abigail aren't going to suddenly start using Abigail. I will definitely still use her. Yes, that's that's the catchphrase, right, Dragon? If you use her, you will still use her. And she will be a little bit more useful. If you don't use her, I don't think this is going to change your mind about her. Alencia. 
Um, Soul Burn increases effect chance to 100% and makes the defense break a two turn. Changing this to Soul Burn increases effect chance to 100% and... Okay, so... Weird. So if you Soul Burn her S1, you now get the defense break no matter what. You ignore ER, you can defense break freaking, you know, Destinas, right? But it's still only going to be a one turn defense break. Now you've got to decide, you know, am I going to guarantee the defense break, but it's only one turn? I think it's kind of good though, right? You don't want a guaranteed defense break to be two freaking turns. That might be a little over the top. And what are we doing up here? Increase hitch, increase crit hit chance by 20. So we're just straight up giving her 20% crit chance boost. That'll make her much easier to build. Uh, taking away inflicting injuries. The severity of the injuries. Great, great. Um, increases combat readiness of the caster by 15%. Mind's eyes, your 50% more effectiveness. When inflict when attacking, inflicts injuries. We removed it from noble blood. Wait, wait. This means she injures on everything she does. She'll injure with her S3. She'll injure not just on her 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 trample, but she's going to injure on... Oh my god, she's going to be an injury spamming machine. Holy crap! Get fucked, two turn two players. <laughs> Have fun fighting with your 15k health senyas. Mother of God, this is a huge change for her. Alencia's ability to inf inflict injuries has been improved. I mean, it was already, she was like one of the, the best, if not the best, single target injury units in the game. Eradicate Solburn effect, which previously increased the duration of de uh, decreased defense, now ignores the target's effect resistance, which means you will get max injury on freaking anybody if you soul burn because you're going to soul burn into a 100% chance to defense break and injury into another attack into defense break that also spams injury. Yikes. Okay, um, Alencia is going to be used a lot now. A lot more. Because we are, we are dealing with some tanky monstrosities that are just damn near impossible to chew through. This will be fantastic. You know what, too? Nothing Alencia does cares about pen. This will really help dealing with uh, with bullshit like Ilanov. Defense buffing your entire team with her S3 and then just starts chewing through HP. I like this. You build you, you and you got you got more crit chance so you can build her faster to make her more impactful. Yeah, I think they realized they went too far with Ilanov and they're sending in the Dragon Granny to deal with it. Oh, and her EE too. In line with the adjustment, Alencia is exclusive equipment. Well, adjustment. Okay, so guys, remember, anytime you see exclusive equipment farted around with, that means there'll be an EE recall. So if you've got the exclusive equipment that's being changed, you're not married to it, you'll be able to recall it for enough currency to custom buy whichever one you want at max value. So this is really nice. If Even if you wanted to keep this EE, but it's not at its max percentage, you can recall it and then craft it at its max percentage. So it, 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 this is a nice win whenever you see this. Increases the effectiveness for two turns when using Genesis. Decreases Comet Rennies to the target... Whoa! She's gonna be flying! You build her fast enough, this S3 might give her time to lap around and get an S2 off. At least definitely do that on the slower units. I'm glad there's free unequip right now because we all gonna be changing our, uh, our Alencias. Remember guys, anytime a bounce patch hits, free unequip is guaranteed. So don't scramble feeling like you gotta change shit last minute for a buff that's not even in place yet. On the 12th, when this patch hit happens, we will get a guaranteed free unequip that weekend, and you'll be able to change these units based on your needs and how people are playing. Moonlight Four Star. Okay, this is the one that had my attention because you know I love that uh, that MLK Ron team, right? So uh, instead of instead of granting two random buffs for three turns in in much bigger font. 
We will be... Okay, so it's guaranteed attack and... When the target is not dead, grants increased attack. Okay, so instead of two random buffs, we're just getting attack buff. So, you know, slight nerf if you're RNG lucky, but for the buff of the stability of it's always an attack buff, because really that's what you want, is the attack buff. And she cleanses on her, uh, on her S3, which is nice. Okay, so you know what? For arena cheese, this is better. Uh, the immortality was always there. For arena cheesing, this is better. Um, if you ban protector and then pick two gotcha units, it is so hard to play this into anything above uh, gold RTA because anybody who's been around the block long enough to see the things that a unchecked shooting star Arcades can do, the first time it happens, you never forget, right? It's not going to change anything, guys. I mean, it's it's the right thing to do, and it's it's going to let you be a little bit more stable in in arena. But if 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 you let somebody rope you with shooting star Arcades, then you only have yourself to blame, right? It will change you, Fiend Labry. Yeah, I mean, slightly, I guess. You, you if you're wanting to use the uh, the Fiend cheese to to. 100% clear lab or, or labyrinth, um, the Nixie labyrinth to get like a thousand ancient coins for charms. I'll link that video in the description of this video. If you want to see how to do that to get unlimited ancient coins, I guess it does make that more consistent, more efficient, faster. Not that it was necessary though. Shooting star Katie's reliability of her resurrection magic has been approved. The effect that previously granted a random buff is guaranteed to attack buff. Additionally, when reviving a fallen ally, the skill now also grants attack increase. Furthermore, the AI has been adjusted so that in auto battle, who uses Akadis in auto battle, the skill will prioritize allies with the highest attack. The awakening skill has been changed from resurrection magic to sparkling star, allowing her to green. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody that used her in auto. I mean, this changes nothing, really. I guess it makes her slightly better for the handful of people who use her to farm Euphine. Okay, artifacts. Otherworldly machine. Increased critical hit chance by 10%. Okay, well, that's nice. They're giving it uh, the midnight pizza delivery treatment, right? They're making this artifact not just do AoE damage, but also increase crit. I think this might make it surpass Rangar's special drink on Bologna for people that are using Bologna in... In Wyvern 13, this might give them the crit hit chance that they need to build their Bologna enough to kill the first mobs, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to reduce gear requirement overall. Uh, it's definitely a buff to an artifact that nobody really uses outside of Wyvern 13. Fan of light and dark. Um, Freaking finally. Finally. So now we can use this freaking artifact... In Hall of Trials and not lose our mind over the RNG. It's going to go from 70% chance to 100% chance, so you'll reliably be able to use this as a way to put a destruction buff on your Hall of Trials units when you use it on a Cades when, um, when Euphine rolls back around. So, and that's just about its only spot. I mean, I, I guess if you're using Ahmed still, there's a handful of people that are still trying to use Ahmed in a modern world. I really miss the days of Ahmed cleaving. I, I loved using Ahmed Ludwig, but it's just harder and harder to do nowadays. But uh, yeah, this this is a nice buff. I think it's more for Hall of Trials and, and for people that Ahmed cleave. But uh, yeah, any anything that reduces RNG like this and increases stability, I'm about it. So that's a W. Yep, yep. These... These are the scheduled bounce adjustments and improvements for the update on 9-12. Remember, there will be a free unequip event the weekend of the 12th. Each of the adventure side story here is echoes throughout Orbis in the seventh world. We are grateful to be with you on your Epic 7 journey. We will continue our best to try to improve heroes in our game so that the characters can be utilized for our heirs. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, uh... Winner of the patch, Alencia, 100%. She is going to be more usable. Everybody is going to build her and build her differently. She is the MVP of the patch for sure, Joe. I think she is going to be the most impactful on this meta. 
Um, Flan and Sermia look like very interesting changes. I think Lionheart Sermia is going to be far more usable. I think it's going to actually make her functional in today's meta, whereas before she was just she was she wasn't even a real unit. She was just not pickable. Flan, I know people are dogging on her. I know people are saying that the extra turn thing is is ruining her, but I really really like what they did with her S three skill. Letting every single person on your team steal buffs for two turns is insane. So I, I'm not going to shit on Flan. I'm, I'm a wait and see camp. I don't, I don't know that the taking the extra turn away is so bad that it eclipses the good that her S3 is. Uh, Judge Kisei. For Judge Kisei and Abigail users, it definitely makes them better. I don't know if it makes them better enough that people who don't already use and already build and already... Um, make comps with these units. I don't think it's going to change their decisions. Shooting Star Arcades, uh was always just a meme, and now she's a slightly better meme. Otherworldly Machine, who gives a rat's ass, and Fan of Light and Dark, straight up a buff, and will have some PvE, as well as potential cleave implications. Now let's check out the comments. I'm sure the comments are very supportive. Don't mention China at all. Revert Pirate Captain. This is a nerf in all caps. Angry all caps. You say this is for aggressive strategies, but aggressive strategies don't benefit from anything you have added. I play Flan with 4k attack and none of that is useful to me. Other yeah, you're going to have to rebuild her. You're going to have to play her differently. They are changing her function because, yeah, this is the way you built her and this just dies. I don't see how the way she was originally built. I mean, unless you, unless your opponent lets you get away with having an opener or anything, I, I I don't get it, guys. I don't get it. You're killing for the six people who are able to successfully use Pirate Flan in today's meta. I'm sure they're very upset that they're going to have to change their build and change their play style. But we want to have the unit be easier to draft and more pro more you know more popular so I, I i'm sorry that you're going to have to rebuild your your niche pirate captain flan utility in the in the handful of games you play if you are going to nerf a unit let it be one that actually deserves it you incompetent company you don't understand your own game at all Ree! yes you had a very good win rate with your pirate captain flan And you are one of very, very few people who had that win rate because out of 333 units, think about your Fribbles file and look at your first 128 units. Did you draft anybody below your 128th unit? I mean, she's not picked a lot at all. She's picked very, very, very seldomly. And, and though when she's picked... When she's picked, she has an, an okay win rate. Smilegate's right. She's not being used in any real and meaningful way. So she needed to have a major adjustment. And I'm sorry for the handful of people that were picking her. That feels like a nerf. But uh, I'm going to get some hates and some downvotes for it. But I'm telling you, you, you she needed... A major overhaul change and her s3 is a major overhaul change and letting her s1 for a guaranteed two-turn defense break into an s3 to let you steal buffs was too damn much they had to take the s they had to take the extra turn away to make the s3 this impactful and change the way people are going to play her and people are going to play her very differently now and very differently is the way she needed to be played because very differently is better than not played at all And now we get everybody parroting the first comment, right? What are you doing with Flan? You actually get to nerf. <sighs> I will say it again. How do you nerf a unit that is not used? It's the same with Yuna. Yeah, Yuna was nerfed, but Yuna was never used to begin with. The difference here is, unlike Yuna, they've nerfed her in a way that potentially will make her usable. People are going to test her and see. You'll be able to build her into comps you never put her in before. I... I, I, I 
I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying, you know, give it a chance. Wait and see. I mean, what do you want him to do? What do you want him to just like uh, say her her S1 now is her S3 and it ignores effect resistance when you burn it and her S3 is now Dark Corvus's S3 but AoE? I mean, what did you want? If you are complaining about a problem without offering a solution, you're whining. And this guy, this guy is whining. He is complaining that... They changed a unit that he likes to use that nobody else is really using, and he doesn't want to give it a chance and see how it works out. He's demanding they revert these changes before he's actually seen them in play. Just like people demanded that they revert DDR's changes before they saw them in play. Just like the people that said, DDR's being nerfed, I can't run them on counter anymore. This is a terrible change. God, guys, it's preseason for a unit that is never picked in any measurable way let's see how it goes give her a chance to actually do something now pflan survivals decide on buy a coin flip or just die to gala or ravi s1 or you take an arius tank with her and it's fundamentally better than it was before don't change my pirate oh my god everybody is really got their knickers in a twist on this. More RNG, more RNG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give her extra turn back. Give her extra turn back so she can be the most broken unit in the game and people can complain about her even more than they're claiming complaining about things like Luna. Can you imagine if she had her S3 and you could still burn her S1 so you could defense break right out of the gate? Oh my god. I agree this is a Fapton nerf, but also a massive Alencia nerf. God, did this guy have a clumsy nurse when he was born? Do not touch her soul bird. It's absolutely carried me through numerous PVE encounters, including the current AI. You know what? He's right. This makes Alencia a little bit harder to use in Ancient Inheritance. In fact, just scrap these changes entirely. What are you thinking? I can't. I can't, right? You know who's used even less than Pirate Captain Flan in RTA right now? Alencia. You know who's going to be used a lot in RTA now? Alencia and probably Pirate Captain Flan. I can't believe nobody has complained that there's no FCC buffs yet. Pro tip, guys. They're, 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 they're going to give FCC um, exclusive equipment before they try to buff her. Oh, there was one. Did I miss it? Yes, that's exactly what this meta needs. That's exactly what this Illinov meta needs, is we need to buff another mitigation knight and make it better. That's what the community's looking for, right? That's what's going to make people stop complaining about RTA and be happier, is we're going to make one of the great disasters of Epic 7 that made it almost impossible to do anything other than tank down. Let's buff that unit in the middle of a turn two tank down meta. <laughs> Genius. It's brilliant. This balance is absolute trash. You will nerf Pirate Captain Flan, overpowering Judge Kisei, and highlight highlighting Lionheart Sermia. Why don't you make all heroes with Fighting Spirit and Focus start with a full gauge? This guy doesn't know how resource reduction works. What makes Sermia special? Um... They don't want to completely kill another mechanic. How is Kisei overpowered? What does he mean? Highlighting Sermia. I still don't think nerf... I don't... I think nerfing an S1 skill while seriously buffing an S3 skill, I'm still blown away that people are calling this a nerf. What makes Judge Kisei special? Have, have you seen Judge Kisei? Ah, we got all... It took... It, it took what? One, two, three, four, five... Six, it took like six or seven comments, but we finally got a China complaint in there. Yes, um... It's China's rabid obsession with Judge Kisei. It's well known, right? That's all China talks about is Judge Kisei. 
Can't believe my eyes to read these articles. It's all nonsense. <laughs> Effed up whatever the hell Judge Kise had going on for her unusable to counterattack buff. Which nobody was using. Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm done with the brain rot on the comment, guys. Here is the here is the the, the the bottom line. If a unit was not being used in any measurable, appreciable way, and I'm not talking about like you and the three other people that used Orval and complaining about the nerf. I'm not complaining about you, Shadobi, and the six other people that were using Pirate Captain Flan and still only pulling off a 47% average win rate. If the unit was not being used in an appreciable, measurable way, it needed to be buffed to be brought into the meta biggest complaints about the meta right now is diversity we can only play the same six units any change that is angled towards increasing the usability of less used units is a good change right you don't like alencia tough this alencia buff is going to make her be drafted that's one more unit that we didn't have before this change to Abigail, as small as it is, it's going to make her usable in places where she wasn't usable before and potentially increase her appearance. Not measurably a huge difference, but it's going to increase her usability. This change to Pirate Captain Flan completely changes the way she is used, and the way she is used wasn't used in this meta. Will this way be usable? I don't know. I think it will be. I think people are really underestimating that line right there. Maybe I'm wrong, but this sure as shit didn't make her usable in the current meta. I think this is a overall positive change in the sense that it changes the way she is used and she desperately needed a change in the way she's used because she's not used. Lionheart Sermia, there's, there's some questions regarding how this will work, but overall, this is going to make Sermia more usable. And that's all there is to it. It takes away some of Sermia's counters. And I'm sorry if you got sand in your knickers that this doesn't just kill fighting spirit across the board, that it doesn't make that makes anti-fighting spirit unit. If you're complaining about a change that's gonna make um Sea Phantom Politis less strong, get your head out of your ass. She's the second most common nerf requested unit in the game. So any the, being able to see somebody pick Sea Phantom Poly and being able to slam Lionheart Sermia as a counter to it, that's great. And Judge Kisei, she is already so damn hard to use. Anything that makes her better, I'm about. So yeah, I, I, I am overall hopeful and positive about these changes. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thumbing my nose at all of the naysayers in the comment section. You can thumb down my video all you want. You can talk about the comment section how, how uh, completely copium I am. I think when a unit is not used, they change the unit radically so that we can see if it's used. And if it's still not used, we can change it radically again. It's a whole lot better than just saying, you know what, let's just make it stronger and that will replace one of the existing problems. So instead of having these eight units played, we'll take one of those eight units away and replace it with one of these buffed eight units and it's still the same eight units. They know the chief complaint is lack of diversity, so they're trying to completely change units that aren't being used to bring some diversity back to the fight, and, and I'm about it. So, uh, maybe it's not the way you would have done it, it's not the way I would have done it, but at least they're trying, at least they're taking swings at some diversity. And you can call that white knight behavior all you want. I think this is the closest thing they can come to changing things up without just directly nerfing the problem units. And there's always going to, anytime we have a serious change to somebody's kit, there's always going to be somebody crying it's a nerf. They cried it was a nerf with Charlotte. They cried it was a nerf with Sharoon. They cried it was a nerf, not Sharoon, but uh, with uh, DDR. It's always going to happen. And it sucks. It sucks that you invested in a, in a unit. It sucks that you have developed a play style. And it sucks that that play style is now getting changed. Get over it adapt roll with the change be glad you're at least in a game where the developers are trying to make impactful changes that change the meta that change the play style at a time when the chief community complaint is it's stale it's boring we're stuck in a rut so that's my two cents um 
Let me know in the comment section. I'm sure you guys are going to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great one, Epic7.